Hey everybody, last time we made a scratch program that made a ball move down the screen, bounce off a boundary, move up, bounce off the top, and keep bouncing back and forth. We made a bouncing ball. It wasn't very realistic looking, um, and uh, that's my goal today, is to try to make a more realistic looking bouncing ball. And by realistic, I mean a ball that's being acted upon by gravity. What we were doing every time through the loop is just changing y by some value. We were changing y by negative 3 when it was going down and changing y by positive 3 when it was going up. So you had this smooth, unchanging, uniform speed. That's not how gravity works. Gravity actually accelerates uh, as the, the fall continues. So the moment you drop this ball, it's not moving. And then it starts down and gets faster and faster as it goes. So that's what we're going to try to do here. And to do that, instead of changing y by some number that's the same every time through the loop, we have to change the number by which we're changing y every time through the loop. To do that, we have to have a variable. So I'm going to make a variable called velocity. So that's going to keep track of how fast the ball is moving, and it's going to change. When we start, when we first let go of that ball, the velocity should be 0. And then we'll start um, our forever loop here. And we're going to set, or actually, we're going to change the velocity by a certain amount. I'm going to pick a number here um, that is the number that physicists use to describe gravity. This is the number g. Um, and it doesn't really have a whole lot of significance here. I could choose any number and, and fiddle with other things to make this look realistic. But if I use this number, this is the number for the acceleration of gravity on Earth. If I use that, then I could change this um, if I know the number of, of the gravity on the moon, and we could have a ball that, that uh, falls as it would on the moon and so forth. So that's why I'm going to use that number. Just needs to be some negative number in this case. OK, and then we're going to change the y position by that amount every time through the loop. So we're going to change y by velocity. All right, so let's see what happens when we run that. All right, that fell really fast. And actually, even though it's stuck there at the bottom of the screen, it kept falling, and the number kept getting bigger and bigger. We've got a couple of things going on. We don't have anything in here to make it bounce. And um, Scratch is pretty fast here. so. Maybe I need to put in a weight uh, to, to make this a little more visible. So I'm going to put in a weight. And one second I know would be way too big. It would uh, make a very jerky movement. I'm going to try 0 0.03. Let's just say 3 hundredths of a second. OK, that seems like it might be OK. We'll fiddle with that later uh, if we need to. It's just a little bit of a, a pause between each step so that the, the movement isn't quite as fast and we get that smooth animated effect. Now, we need to bounce. So let's put in an if statement. So if, and we're going to check if the y position is less than a certain amount. So we'll get the y position here. And we'll bounce it at negative 140 again. So if the y position is less than negative 140, we want to bounce this. And this is the, the tricky part of this. Um, this code here. What happens when you bounce something? Well, the velocity, assuming it's a perfectly elastic ball, you drop it on the ground. When it hits the ground, it reverses its direction, and it comes back at you just as fast. A super ball does a really good job of that. It's, it's highly elastic, so you drop it, and it comes back um, pretty much just as fast uh, as, as it went down. So what that means is the velocity is changing from whatever negative number it was. Oh, I've still got that running. Look at that go. Um, suddenly to its positive number so that it's actually moving up. So what I want to do is take whatever velocity is at that point and change it to its positive value of that. And I can do that. There's an operator down here. It says square root right now, but you've got all kinds of choices. And you can choose. Um, where did it go? I want the, oh, right at the top, the absolute value. What absolute value does is it takes a negative number and makes a positive. That's just what I want to do. I don't want the absolute value of 9 there. I want the absolute value of velocity. And what we're going to do is set velocity to the absolute value of velocity. 
Now, before we run this, let's think about what's going to happen here. Um, when I was making the other ball, I, I made it bounce at the bottom, and then it went all the way up to the top and didn't come down again. That's not actually going to happen here, because every time through, I've still got change velocity by negative 9.8. So we're subtra subtracting 9.8 from the velocity every time through the loop. So even though if it reaches the bottom, we're going to change the velocity to some bigger positive number, it's still going to keep slowing down because of gravity. Well, let's look at it and see what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. So we get a ball that bounces. Let's try that again. Oops. And I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty realistic to me. Let's see now how this works on the moon. Uh, I looked up the moon a little bit earlier. The acceleration of gravity on the moon is negative 1.6. So we're going to just put that in. Let's watch the ball drop on the moon. Mm, much higher bounce. All right, and that is how to make, well, actually, we've got a couple of glitches going on with this. What you'll notice is that at a certain point, it goes below the 140. We're down here at 180 now. So there's there's something odd about Scratch in this code. So that's a thing we could fix. But I'm pretty happy with this right now because to me, it looks like a pretty realistic bouncing ball. One question to ask is why it looks like it's bouncing off of the bottom of the screen many times. And then why does it settle down? So that would be something to examine and explore. But right now, I think we have some success.